Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa Siegel. I'm a professor of migration studies and this is a channel about all things migration. So today we're going to start with a migration policy series, which we're going to talk about a range of different migration policy issues over a number of different videos. We're going to talk about things like, you know, just existing migration policies. What kind of mi migration policies do we see? What are the types of migration policies? Also talk a little bit about the trends in different migration policies, maybe talking, you know, about some policy challenges and opportunities in other videos. Also, I'll be looking at um, uh, migration policies in countries of origin, migration policies in countries of destination in general. So stay tuned for a range of different videos on different migration policies. But today I want to just start with, well, what are migration policies and what are the different types of migration policies that we see today? Now, what are migration policies? So of course, definitions of things we know are always quite complicated. So migration policy is really a term that is very widely used, but often not very clearly defined. So here's a recent definition from the migration literature on what migration policies are. Um, here it's a government's statement of what it intends to do or not do, including laws, regulations, decisions, or orders in regards to the selection, admission, settlement, and deportation of foreign citizens residing in the country. Now, IOM's migration governance framework defines migration policy as law and policy affecting the movement of people and includes policy on travel and temporary mobility, immigration, emigration, nationality, labor markets, economic and social development, industry, commerce, social cohesion, social services, health, education, law enforcement, foreign policy, trade, and humanitarian issues. So you can see that this is an incredibly all-encompassing definition of what migration policy is. Now, of course, there are other related terms to migration policy like migration regulation, restriction, or, con or control, but I hope that what you'll find here is that migration policy goes much beyond that with regard to what we see today. And I hope that you will understand this by, of course, the end of this video. Now, of course, there are also different types of migration policies in different phases of the migration cycle. So migration policy can be seen from the perspectives of countries of origin, countries of transit, and countries of destination. And we know that most countries around the world today encompass all of these. So most countries around the world today are countries of origin, countries of transit, and countries of destination, even if those countries are maybe more one than the other. Now, if we look at different migration policies, we can think of, you know, policies with regard to emigration or forced displacement, immigration, integration, return, and reintegration, you know, that really follows the migration cycle. So in addition, governments need to take into consideration how non-migration policies also affect migration and are affected by migration also. So, you know, policies in general are very much linked to each other. So we, when we look at migration policies and maybe how they're also affecting migration, they can't be seen in a vacuum. Now let's talk about some specific types of migration policies. We have a number of different possible, possible migration policies here. We'd have things like border and land control, policies around human trafficking, um, policies around internal migration or immigration or emigration. And then we of course have the coordination and cooperation in migration management. So now I'm gonna go through each one of these one at a time, showing the different types of migration policies that we see in these different areas. So let's get started with border and land control. So border management here is really a major policy area where we see things like surveillance control mechanisms, um, the identification of documents, referral mechanisms and cooperation with the relevant inland institutions and integrated border management objectives. Now, of course, the area of human trafficking is one that has gained a lot of a policy attention over the last years. And here we see measures against human trafficking, procedures to protect victims of trafficking, and that's including, of course, labor exploitation, not only trafficking for sexual exploitation or other reasons. Um, and 
We also see human trafficking prevention measures all under this category. Now we can move next to internal migration. So there are plenty of policies around internal migration. Also, one has to do with internal displacement. So we have protection of IDPs and durable solutions. We have services to IDPs. We have the impact analysis with regard to the protection of services and solutions for IDPs also. Then on the other side, we have urbanization. And here we have urban planning and labor market um, changes and analysis that often needs to be done around urbanization. Then we also have environmentally induced internal migration. And here we're looking at early warning mechanisms, protection and support mechanisms, and impact and analysis of environmental changes you know, on, and how this affects migration. So for example, changes in the availability of work in, agri in the agriculture sector and how this might affect migration. Now, of course, the big one is immigration policy, probably the ones that first came to your own mind. So typical policies here are around entry, stay, and the residence of foreigners, things like visas, um, residency rules and channels, so things like family reunification, work, study, investment, business, and much more. There's also control over legal stay, policies around integration, so things like language, housing, cultural integration, lots of policies around integration, as well as policies around citizenship. If we look specifically at labor immigration, we see policies around the access of foreigners to labor markets, like quotas or labor market tests. We have responsibilities of employers related to the employment of foreign workers. We also have policies around seasonal migration and specific work permits, as well as equal treatment of foreigners and national workers. And sometimes we also see bilateral agreements, including circular migration agreements with other countries. Now within immigration, we also have uh, policies around irregular migration and measures to prevent irregular migration and regularization processes that we see sometime, as well as policies around detention. Then on the other side, we have protection and protection policies. So things like um, giving refugee status or other subsidiary protections or temporary and other forms of protection. Things also like um, you know, refugee resettlement or the integration of refugees, which could also include those with subsidiary protections also. Now within immigration policies, there are also policies around the removal of foreigners also. This could be voluntarily, this could be, you know, assisted returns and other types of returns. We could see forced returns here or deportations. Um, also policies around travel documents and uh, relations and cooperations with embassies, um, it, you know, and in destination countries also. Um, we also have readmission agreements or memorandums of understanding that are also signed with different countries around uh, the removal of foreigners and particularly the forced removal of foreigners. Now on the flip side, we also have emigration policies or policies having to do with people who have left the country. And here we can start with labor emigration policies. These are policies aimed at limiting the negative effects of the so-called brain drain. Those of you that know this channel well know that I don't like that term. And of course, you can also check out my video on why we probably shouldn't be using that term here. And I'll link it in the description below. But there are policies that are explicitly aimed at the migration of the highly skilled that are often touted as brain drain policies. So under labor emigration, we also see policies on the promotion of employment abroad. So really the exporting of labor. We also have control over, over other activities of uh, um, employment agencies or prevention of labor exploitation. And we also have measures to prevent irregular work abroad. Now, additionally, under emigration policies, we also have services to and protection of nationals abroad. So things like consular and diplomatic services, um, things like dual citizenship or emigrant status. And then we also have the return of nationals and policies all around that. So we have mechanisms to support the reintegration of returning nationals, sometimes also reintegration support or things that are actually trying to get nationals to return. 
And then we have additionally policies with regard to relations with the diaspora. So here we have relations with emigrants and diaspora members abroad, cooperation with diaspora organizations abroad also, uh, policies trying to attract diaspora investment and the facilitation of remittances, which is often a big one that's often talked about in policies, especially policies relating to uh, you know the development impacts of migration. So we see these relations with the diaspora as a lot of the policies that governments try to focus on with regard to having serious impact on development in countries of origin. Now another area of policy that we should probably look at is the coordination and cooperation with regard to migration management. So here you can have unified registers, databases, and statistics within a country. And here we see the coordination of development and uses of these kind of unified databases. We see collection, documentation, and analysis of migration-related statistical information also within a country when different sides are also able to work together with different, with different departments, different ministries. Um, we also see sometimes information materials, tools, and campaigns that are also used in migration management. And we see cooperation and coordination in information provision here. Now, additionally, we also have migration-related coordination mechanisms. So these could be the creation or the maintenance of the National Migration Coordination Body or mechanism that many countries have to try to coordinate on migration issues, again, between different migration bodies or between different ministries or departments that are working on these topics. We also have cooperation mechanisms with local authorities or cooperation with civil society and academia also sometimes. And then we also have international cooperation on migration. So here we can see participation in permanent international migration related groups or fora or dialogues or conferences or organizations. And we can also see international cooperation on different migration priorities. And now I'm not gonna get into all of the nitty gritty of these. Of course, there are loads of examples of these, which I'll talk about in other videos. But right now, I just wanted to give you a quick overview lay of the land of different types of migration policies and how migration policies are working or how coordination is working sometimes in general. So if you want to learn more about other videos, please do stay tuned. Um, there'll be a plenty more coming on different types of migration policies on the channel. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure to do that and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos that we upload every week on different migration issues. Feel free to comment down below and let us know what other videos you'd like to see in the future. I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.